we have this saying in Italy, you don't need to travel all the way to the Caribbean, you just need to go to Sardinia. We have lots of rock actually, with some of the most beautiful multi-beach routes in Europe. Sailing and climbing, the best combo, allows us access to places otherwise inaccessible. That's me, actually in Sardinia, on Tavolara Island, during the Via Ferrata that uh, hopefully we will do together on the first day. I really love mountain sports, I'm a passionate climber, and uh, my passions actually became my job. So during the winter, I teach how to ski as a ski instructor, and in the summer I was uh, able to combine the other passion of mine, which is sailing and uh, the sea with rock climbing. And that's actually how the vertical sailing tour idea came in. I really like to mention that something that I found common in both of my jobs, both in the winter and in the summer, it's that I really like to make my guests, my clients to experience what I really like and in the way I like it. So let's say I have someone to bring, we're going to ski on a slope and maybe I will try to make them discover the fresh snow as I really like to ski off piste and I try to transfer my passion, you know, for the old environment, for the mountains around, for the fresh snow and the same it happens on the boat. So what we do in the vertical sailing tour is that we explore with the boat, the coastline. And instead of just having a regular cruise, what I really like is to get on land and to explore and being able to find new places and find adventures while we trekking uh, and climbing. And uh, so this is what we do with vertical sailing tour and what I would like to make you experience if you would come with me. Regarding Sardinia, I've been traveling there for the past 20 years since I was a kid. And so we quite have a good knowledge of the territory over there. But vertical sailing tour, it's not only me, it's actually me, which on board, I am the skipper. And then we have our lovely mountain guide. Here is Alberto, the one with the blue t-shirt. We are actually in the north, Sardinia. The, you can see our boat more down there. And in this case, Alberto, it's at the top of a route that you will see later on and it's preparing to descend. Alberto is a mountain guide, has been a mountain guide for almost 15 years now. And he's been traveling all over the world. So he really made lots of experience he was at the top of Cerro Torre, so he uh, our mountain guide for the land activities on the Sardinia tour. Okay, so here are the points that we will be covering and I will explain you some highlights of the climbing spots that we will be going through, then some logistic and finishing with the Q&A. What Italians say about Sardinia? We actually, we have this saying in Italy, you don't need to travel all the way to the Caribbean, you just need to go to Sardinia. And that's actually very true because I was lucky enough to be a few times to the Caribbean. Uh, I was in uh, Cuba, Colombia, Dominican Republic, and actually I can tell you Sardinia is nothing to invite with, to it. Here you can see why. This is one of the stops we'll be making. It's Cala Luna, and you can see how really like Sardinia has beautiful sea. But if you focus, you can already see that it's not only a beautiful sea, but there's something around. So maybe you can start notice the quality of the rock, which is around. We have lots of rock actually. And uh, here you can see miles and miles of rock. That's on the east coast of Sardinia. It's where we like to do our tours. These are our guests actually going along one of the most famous wild trackings in Europe, which is called the Selvaggio Blue and something that we also do through the climbing days. And here we have at the top left of the picture, Punta Giradili, which is 500 meters of perfect limestone with some of the most beautiful multi-pitch routes in Europe. And just to give you an idea on how much rock we have in Sardinia, we can also see this other picture taken at sunset. So this picture here is actually miles north from the other picture. That's just the east coast of Sardinia, which keep goes and going on and going on with uh, lots, lots, lots of possible climbs to do. Actually, just to give you some data in Sardinia, we have up to 6,000 single pitch routes and almost 1,000 multi-pitch routes. 
And uh, of course, that's what's on top and that's what you get at the bottom. So really here we are uh, at the Caribbean level with this beautiful emerald blue waters of uh, Sardinia. So let's get into climbing perspective and let's talk a little bit about the rock that we will encounter during the tour and some peculiarities of this island. Here you see what we find in the north of Sardinia. So that's actually granite and it's a very, very, very special granite because it has been shaped by the wind. So it comes with all these crazy shapes. That's our guest Marta bouldering. Here, there's a part of the crew during one tour of us, ours. Uh, our guide, Alberto, to the left, me to the right. And uh, we are actually in front of Corsica here. So extreme north of Sardinia, there's a um, channel between the two islands, Corsica and Sardinia, where really the wind picks up. And here it's able to shape and create this amazing scenario. So as you can see here, there's a... Alberto leading uh, the route with uh, our guest Marco after, and that's a luxury, like a 120 meter route, something like that. Trot climbing. This place is called Capotesta and it's really, really, really unique. I can keep returning to this place and it's just amazing. And uh, once again, another example, literally something like that. I've only seen it in Seychelles and nowhere else in the world. So you can uh, use your imagination to picture any sort of animal in here. And so this is actually what we find in the north. But as we start to go south, the rocks changes. So as we go south, we start to get into limestone. That's actually a via ferrata through the Selvaggio Blue, which is the trekking I was telling you about. So this is the piece of coast that we will cover by sailing. Our boat will be basically just at the bottom of this cliff. And here are guests of our that it's actually going through here, through these amazing valleys. The southward you go, the more it changes. Beautiful example of tufa climbing. The limestone has been shaped by the wind, by the water, the salt. And uh, you go into this cave, which is amazing. It's called Millennium Cave. That's our pro climber, Federica, that was invited to the tour. And uh, I remember taking this picture. So there was lots of organization going on. We had a professional photographer, which actually was hanging in the middle of the cave. Another skipper uh, sailing. So that's actually our boat. So we made everything to get the two subjects, the climber and the boat into the picture. And again, as you move south, you can encounter a different type of limestone. You can see it's much more compact. You got nice little pockets, cracks into it. And um, again, here's our guest. I believe she's Elisa and uh, our dinghy down there. And this beautiful multi-pitch climb, right? Basically you start from the beach. And then if you would go even souther, sometimes you encounter basalt. So here we have our uh, happy guests. Uh, again, in a scenario which looks like Seychelles, but it's actually in the center of Europe. So let me tell you something more about what we will find in Sardinia as a culture and uh, the relation that we have with the, with the locals. So I really like this picture because there was the whole crew here uh, doing some bouldering. And uh, I chose this picture because it's actually the walking distance from a prehistorical site. I give you some data again, like in Sardinia, few inhabitants were discovered to be like 100,000 years ago. And then Sardinia as an island, because it was at the center of the Mediterranean, went through lots of colonizations. So it was colonized by the Byzantines at the beginning, uh, then by the Carthaginians, by Romans, Aragonese, and all these cultures actually blend together. You can really see this blend of the cultures once you get in touch with the locals, because you discover that through the different musics, different dishes that you will eat, which are a mix of these cultures with the architecture, uh, dances. So here's a, a local. You see, we always leave something to them. So he's preparing the, a nice barbecue for us. 
another local that was really so kind to give us a ride from East Taverna. We were actually two boats here and we managed to fit all of us on our pickup. Another taverna, so we left, always leave some flags, some present to them and we would like to go back and they really welcome us every time. Sailing and climbing, the best combo. So why is it the best combo? It's a nice combo because actually allows us to access to places otherwise inaccessible because yes, some cracks by the sea are accessible also by land, but sometimes the path is very long, it's complicated, but other cracks are literally inaccessible by land. So some of the cracks where we will go and some routes are only accessible by the boat. So this is a great advantage. So no one else will go there at least he has a boat and not many people can afford it and we know where to go. So here you can see that's Mark from Switzerland and you can see our boat below. So this is a good example of an accessible route which becomes accessible for us. I really like to say that the boat, it's our moving base camp because really acts like a base camp. It's a place where we go back, we can rest, we sleep there, we cook, and then we move it where we need it. We just need to drop the anchor and uh, so that allows us for an absolute freedom. We just choose where to go, we drop the anchor, and there we have our base camp where to start the next adventure from. Last but not least, in order to move this base camp, we can do it just by channeling the power of the nature. So we channel the wind through our sails, and so we can move really efficiently and ecologically along the shore. Again, here you see the best example of what we actually do at the vertical sailing tour. So we sail, and then when we approach the piece of shore where we would like to climb, he's embarked with the dinghy. You see the dinghy more right there. And right now, Mark is uh, repelling after the, he's at the very last meter of the repel after the route. And so we will get on the dinghy and get back on board. Another picture to show you that sometimes the thing that this picture was taken with a GoPro, so with a wide angle, so the boat really look far away, but <laughs> that's like a literally swimming distance and that's a morning climb. So we climb, but we also sail. Maybe many of you are climbers. They have never been on a sailing boat. And uh, so there's nothing to worry about it. There's a professional skipper. Most of the time that's me. And I will be in charge of the sailing. So you will be safe on board. And if you are interested, I'm very, I'm more than welcome to teach you and give you all the knowledge that I have. By the end of the week, you can get a good knowledge of sailing to know how to operate the sails, know how to steer the boat. And so in this picture, you see, I remember this guy, he was called Gianpaolo. He got really into steering the boat and at the end of the week, he became very good. So that's a picture of us together. You can see I'm sitting beside him and teaching how to, to maneuver the boat while the other rest of the crew was one was dealing with the front sail, one was dealing with the back sail. And so that's how it works on board. And then we don't forget our precious weapon to conquer the land. So that's going to be the dinghy that we always drag while we sail. And we will use the dinghy to disembark. So in this picture, you cannot see our boat because it's covered by this boulder. So we drop the anchor and then we put our, our gear onto the dinghy. We get onto the dinghy and then we reach the shore with it. So it's something you will get familiar with during the tour. Usually the course that we choose, it's from Olbia. I will explain you later what it is. We start to go south. And the first day we stop at the Tavolara Island, which is an amazing island where we do a via ferrata over there. So just to warm up for the climbing. The second stop, it's going to be Calafuili. That's Fabio in front of the boat and uh, he's waiting for my signal to drop the anchor. So we will drop the anchor in front of the beach here. You can see a tiny beach. It's actually not tiny, it looks tiny. So the first crags are right on the beach. And then here in Calafuili, we have a long canyon, which goes inland for almost two kilometers. You find sport climbing, single pitches routes on the, both on the right side and on the left side. So you have hundreds of routes inside this canyon for every level of timers. So you can see she's climbing here at the beach sector. And if you start to walk, you enter into the valley with all the climbs. 
Then if we move south, we arrive to Cala Luna. Cala Luna is this amazing location where you find all these caves right on the beach. As it says here, you don't even need to put your approach shoes. You just literally disembark by the dinghy and bare feet, you reach the crag. By the way, with us, an amazing quality rock, again, limestone, and you start to climb. And between one climb and the other, if you want to refresh, you just go for it. That's, that was Christina. She was from Austria. And you can see actually the perfect quality of the limestone that she's climbing on. That was inside the cave. If we move south, farther south, that's again a piece of the trekking that um, we can do here and there. Of the Selvaggio Blue, the trekking I was telling you about. And we can see at the bottom this nice spur which comes up. And that's actually the... Aguglia di Cala Golorizze. And that's something really, really, really unique. You can see our dinghy looks like it's floating on the water, like if there's no water because it's so transparent. And over here onto this sea stack, we have 12 routes starting from 6A. And it's really an achievement if we can reach it and climb it. That would be one of the highlights of the week for sure. And then if we move south, we find another amazing spot. This one is called Pedra Longa. It has 14 routes on it. And actually here it's super easy. Uh, the starting level, it's really affordable for everybody to start to climb on it because it starts from uh, 4C, which is a 5.7. And then you have climbs that get harder. So what we do, again, we drop the anchor in front of it. We disembark with the dinghy on the beach. By the way, the beach is just on the other side. And there are up to 20 routes uh, right on the beach where you can climb on, and then we will go around it. And then if you want to do some multi-beach routes, then you will have a view like that. The trip is, is really worth it just for bringing home a picture like that. It's something unusual and really, really fun to be able to get into this type of situation. Again, this is how it looks from uh, just to the side. Uh, you actually see basically this probably the second beach. So the first one you reach really are basically at the water level. And then another amazing spot, it's Millennium Cave. When I was showing you the, the limestone with all the tufas, here we are. And you have this nice forest, which comes up by the sea. Then you have like a beach inside the cave, uh, like it's all sandy. And uh, once you get into, you see something like that. So again, like thousands of tufas and really lots of roots over here, hard ones at the edges of the caves. And so something that looks, I'll give you maybe a few more seconds to look at this one because it's one of my favorite pictures. And just, you know, to, to walk and to enter here, it's um, something amazing. Roots starting from 6B actually at the edges. And uh, I will get there shortly. She was a pro climber, so she knew the deal. And we took these beautiful pictures on the 7B at the edge of the, of the cave. And here again, like our boat, it's actually us and Federica repelling at the end of the climb. If you get to the side of the cave, you actually find also some easy pitches. So you can see here, it's a really easy pitch, but um, like picture yourself, that's me belaying. And uh, on the right side, I have the sea, but uh, if I look to the left, something we cannot see right now, I'm actually looking into the Millennium Cave and there's this huge cave surrounding me. And uh, so you can really climb at the edge of the cave and getting the feeling of being uh, inside the tufas. So these were the spots that uh, I hope to bring you to, uh, where we will go in October. And let's not forget Deepwater Solo because we are on the boat, so every piece of rock, if it looks safe, if we have the depth, it's good. The rock quality is good and it's a little bit overhanging or just vertical, so it's safe. Uh, we can just drop our anchor and uh, go and have fun and find some line, lines which have never been climbed before. And so deep water solo is something that maybe not all of you could have tried it before, but if you are on board, for sure we, we will. How do we live on board? So here you see lots of happy people because that was after the climbing. So we try to stay sober and fresh for the climbs. We need to commit 
to be focused. Otherwise, the guide Alberto will uh, wants us to be focused, but then we also have fun a little bit. So here's the crew. We are uh, sailing all together, and I would like to tell you something more of what it means to be a crew. So since we get on board, we are a crew all together. It means that everything that we will do, we will do it together. Let's say we want to prepare dinner. So someone will start to prepare an aperitif. While someone is doing the aperitif, some, someone else is maybe scatting the groceries. Someone will cook. And who relaxed who, during the whole dinner, maybe will wash the dishes uh, at the end. So this is how it works. It works for when we eat for when we need to get on land with the dinghy, uh, embark in the dinghy, disembark. So everybody helps, you know, passing the gear, uh, loading the dinghy, unloading the dinghy, or uh, I will say, okay, now we sail, let's reset the boat. And everybody will do his little job on board. And uh, if everybody does something, then everything, uh, like the whole crew really becomes efficient and you will feel actually a part of the crew because what we are doing, we are doing it together. So I cannot put up the sails by myself. I will need your help and uh, I will teach you how to do it. And then together we will be sailing. This is what means for me being a crew. So here we are sailing. I'm talking about the life on board right now. So um, you can see here we're sailing. Someone will be steering, someone will be uh, dealing with the with the sails and of course we always have a fishing rod dragging something at the back of the boat because fishing is another passion that we have so you can see on the right side i just caught an octopus and we will have a lovely salad in the evening with octopus at the left you could see fabio when this picture was taken it was a very, very special day. It was actually in October because September and October are the best months to, to fish, uh, tunas in Sardinia. And what happened is that during that day, we caught so many small tunas and other fishes like uh, ricciolas. And uh, it's really tasty, trust me. And we caught actually so many that at the evening, what we did is we went to a restaurant. We gave all the fishes to the restaurant. So half of the fishes, we eat them. So they cook it for us. We only had to pay the drinks. That was the deal. And they could keep the other half of the fishes for the guests. So that was really a, a nice day. And here you see on board, uh, we are having the, the tuna that we caught. Tuna tataki, you know, you just roast it on the, on the sides. And then you have with the lemon sauce or soya sauce. It's amazing to be able to eat something that you caught like one hour before, super fresh, super tasty. A nice pictures of the aperitif that uh, one of our guests prepared. She was really good at like carving the melon and stuff. That picture is at the sunset after a climbing day. We, we just chill, you see by the, uh, in the shade of the sails and we are sailing to, to the place where we will spend the night. We like to have fun on board. Of course, so there's not only climbing and sailing. So during this trip, a friend of us brought his uh, wakeboard and we just attach it to the boat. There he is like doing some wakeboard and then everybody tried it to. So we had some fun in this way. And sometimes we get even more crazy and we do the Jesus walk. This game is actually consists in tying the ropes. Here we were two boats. So one sailing uh, beside the, the other. We tie the ropes to the masts. They are connected. So the guy is actually dragged into the sea. And then as we move apart, he becomes Jesus because he starts to walk on the water, as you see. And eventually, as the boats get farther apart, here you see she was Agnes from uh, Poland. She got quite high and then she just releases and uh, jumps into the sea. And all the other ones just taking the pictures at the side. And when night arrives, then we like to put some music. That was Mike. He found the captain hat and he put it on and he was putting some music. Girls were preparing the spritz over here. And if you look at the bottom right picture, you get a nice idea on uh, how the space on board is. So that's the table where we will be eating uh, outside and we like to eat uh, outside uh, just by the stars. 
everybody sits around, there are benches for everybody. So we cook our food and then we eat outside over there. Really nice. And then if the dinner goes on and we got really happy, we get into, into the vertical sailing tour Olympics. So what we do, we split the crew in uh, two or three small other crews. We time how long it takes for them to row around the boat. And let's see the whoever can, uh, can win. And when we sleep at night, it looks something like that. So Alex, our professional photographer that joined us, he made this amazing picture. So he got onto the beach and uh, he shoot this picture. So there are actually our two boats moored over there. And you can see really the pictures how you see it by naked day. So all the Milky Way. And this is how we spend the night. So that's pretty much what we do during our tours. Logistic for the Sardinia tour, which is going to happen from the 2 to the 9 of October. And first of all, where is Sardinia? It's at the center of uh, the Mediterranean. Uh, you can see the dot over there. It's very easily accessible from uh, all the main cities on the coast, at least of Italy. I believe also from France or Spain, from Genova, Savona, every other city in, Tos in Tuscany, close to Rome. So wherever, if you're traveling already in Italy, you can easily uh, access it by ferry. Or the ferry goes to Olbia, or uh, Olbia is also international airport. So uh, wherever you are uh, flying from, you can uh, find the uh, planes landing in Olbia. And from there, you just jump on a bus, 40 minutes ride, or a taxi even faster, 20 minutes, and you will reach Portisco, which is the marina where the boat will be, and uh, the meeting is going to be on board. So... You will find the pier with our boat, look for our flags. Uh, you arrive and uh, we do the check-in. We prepare the boat. Uh, we do the shopping. We prepare the boat for the week. After all our equipment, our stuff, it's stored away. If everybody's on board, there are no delays. We can already start and sail out on the first night and go to sleep in a nice bay by the stars and be ready to, to take over the climbs on the next day. What gear will you need? So you should bring with you your personal climbing gear. So we ask you to bring your harness, your helmet, your climbing shoes, and your chalk bag. Then ropes and quick draws are highly recommended if you don't have them because maybe you've just started to climb or maybe you have been, you are traveling a lot uh, before or after the trip, after the trip, and it's becomes uh, too bulky to carry with you. There's only like one or two people that cannot bring it with you. You just tell us and our uh, guide will bring uh, a rope and some quick draws for you. Then you just need a backpack for daily activities, uh, some hiking shoes. So no flip-flops or sandals, guys, please. The rock would be very sharp. And remember, it can be really hot during the day, but can be also cold, maybe with a little breeze at night. So bring just a warm pullover some waterproof uh, clothes, uh, a jacket is fine enough, a pair of long pants, a pair of short ones, and then you will be just uh, living in your bathing suit. How do the boats that we sail on look like? This picture was actually, this was an entire crew from US. They all came, uh, they were friends together and they booked this. It was a birthday of uh, one of these guys. So you can see that the boat is actually quite big. That's just the boat. So we use sailing boats always, which can be monohull, which means that uh, it's a standard boat or a catamaran with uh, two holes. And uh, boats are quite long, are from 45 to 55 feet. And uh, usually there are from four to five cabins. Every cabin has, uh, is for two people. And the beds could be double bed or a bank bed. We will sort it out. Maybe, you know, there are couples that will get the double beds. There are single travelers. They prefer to sleep on the bank bed. So there will be alternatives for everybody. Two to four toilets, very spacious living room inside, big table, benches. You get the oven, you get two fridges. So really comfortable boats to stay on, well equipped. Skills and level requested. So. You don't need any particular skill. 
uh, neither for uh, climbing, neither for sailing. So first climber, f- first time sailors are, are welcome and just need to be like in a good physical shape. And uh, if you are uh, already a professional, that's better. But I mean, it's good for you, but we welcome everybody. So our guide Alberto, it, it's there to supervise the climbing. Because so if you are already an experienced climbing, you can climb independently. He will just supervise you. If you are a first time climber, he will teach you all the technique, the safety, the maneuvers, the knots, how to set the anchors and really knows the best tricks from his job. So even if you are an experienced climber, for sure, like having someone like him, a guy with such a lot of experience providing you precious tips. My responsibility when we are on sea, I will teach you everything and Alberto will teach you everything on land. I hope you enjoyed the talk and then you are ready to join us. Here you can get some data of the trip. I just want to thank again and uh, remind you that if you want to follow us or get some more information, there's also our website and there are Facebook channel, the Instagram channel and a YouTube. So thank you for joining us and let's go.